Hello, everyone, and a very pleasant good afternoon or evening to you, wherever you may be. I'm your host, Ben Charles, and welcome to another edition of Life's Opening Radio Rope Break. This is an extra review, and this is going to be a pretty much a fill-in kind of show. We were going to do the Money in the Bank review like when it first came out, but then Cabo had his PC problems, and hopefully uh, those problems get resolved within a matter of uh, matter of weeks, maybe a matter of months, but I'm going to hold down the fort. So, anyway, we're going to review WWE's Money in the Bank 2023, which happened on July 1st, 2023, from the O2 Arena in London, England. This was the first Money in the Bank to be held outside of the United States, as you guys may have noticed. And the last uh, WWE event was in Insurrection, was back in 2003, and I believe that was a, a Raw uh, show as well. So, yeah, there you go. Anyway... There was a lot of good things, especially especially on this show. I really like this show. A whole lot I like this show. Except probably for one match on this entire show. Um, you guys know why you guys are here. The O2 Arena in London. Man, hell of a crowd. Hell of a crowd. Seriously, you guys were absolutely incredible in London. I don't know where you guys were so passionate. Man, I, I gotta give y'all a round of applause, man. Oh my goodness. My goodness, man. My God. Anyway, Money in the Bank 2023 from London. Michael Cole, still employed. Wade Barrett, who is here. By the way, Wade Barrett got a big reaction when he was commentating tonight. He got a huge reaction. Wade Barrett is over in London and then he will ever be in the United States. Money in the Bank ladder match 2023. Damian Priest, Ricochet, Shinsuke Nakamura from Monday Night Raw. LA Knight. A lot of people were asking for LA Knight to win this match. And a lot of people were upset that LA Knight did not win this match. But hey, this here nor there. I mean, I said back on the Knight of Champions review that I wanted LA Knight to win. No, no, no. Excuse me. No. Not the Knight of Champions review. The Dominion review that we did with me and Cabo. I mentioned that I thought LA Knight was going to win this match. And then all of a sudden, you know, we're always disappointed and stuff like that so anyway la knight butch santos escobar who qualified on smackdown and logan paul who did not qualify just randomly showed up on this goddamn show and then all of a sudden he decides hey i'm in money in the bank now i'm gonna win the money in the bank briefcase no you did not logan paul got his ass whooped for two minutes straight two minutes they beat the fucking piss out of logan paul you fucking kidding me? Jesus Christ. These people are absolutely unbelievably stupid. If y'all thought Logan Paul was going to win that match. And why was Logan Paul in this goddamn match? Yeah, just because, oh, because of, uh, you know, Logan Paul all of a sudden is a draw. What? Logan Paul not no goddamn draw? When did Logan Paul become a damn draw? Logan Paul can't draw a goddamn penny, let alone a dime. Give me a fucking break. Jesus Christ. Anyway, they all beat up Logan Paul. Logan Paul climbed up a ladder after like a couple of minutes. But everyone stopped him, as always. Escobar, Butch, and Ricochet, they pinned Priest down in the corner with a ladder. They beat the shit out of Damian Priest for a while. LA Knight got some offense in on Santos Escobar. Butch beat the shit out of Nakamura at one point. He also fought Ricochet, you know. Butch and Ricochet, they got history because of uh, Black and Gold NXT. So, anyway, um, Santos Escobar, he was, he looked, Santos Escobar looked really, really, really good in this match. I cannot tell you guys how very happy I'm finally seeing Santos Escobar getting a huge push. Like, seriously, Santos Escobar is way too good not to be a champion. And apparently he's going to be fighting uh, Austin Theory for the U.S. title on SmackDown. So, this is going to be very interesting to say the least. And I think Santos Escobar, I think he wins the U.S. title. Austin Theory is doing absolutely nothing with the goddamn belt. Why, why would you put the belt on the guy knowing that Austin Theory has not done anything with the U.S. title? Take the belt off of him. Santos Escobar is probably the biggest thing, like, ever right now in all of WWE. In the mid-card. Put the belt on Santos Escobar. Why not? 
Anyway, Logan Paul kept climbing up the ladder. Everyone stopped him, and then Logan Paul and Damian Priest, they had an alliance for about a couple of minutes. So they set up two tables at ringside, but Damian Priest beat the shit out of Logan Paul. Of course he did. Logan Paul then came back, and then he attacked everyone. I'm not making this up. He attacked Ricochet, LA Knight, Butch, Shinsuke. You guys get the idea. Um, Butch then applied a chin lock on Santos Escobar while on the ladder. Um, apparently, I wrote down a chin lock. More like a sleeper hole. More like a sleeper hole. But anyway, as um, Butch and Escobar are, you know, fighting, Ricochet does a 450 splash onto both of them. And then Ricochet, you know, he goes on top of the ladder. And then look, Ricochet and Logan Paul were supposed to do a spot. And um, Rick, so Logan Paul and Ricochet were going to do a spot off the top rope. But Logan Paul slipped like an idiot. He botched. Then Ricochet was going to do a Spanish fly off the apron to the two tables on the outside. Well, uh, Ricochet and Logan Paul, you know... They had a little bit of a timing issue, let's just put it like that. So they had a timing issue, and then Logan Paul, he took this Spanish fly, the table barely broke. Logan Paul, I believe, landed on his, on his, on his arm, right? Yeah, he landed on his bicep, and um, all that other stuff. Logan, that did not look good, by the way. That Spanish fly, even if it was a, a saved botch by Ricochet, that did not look good at all. That looked like some shit out of Ring of Honor. Hell no. I'm glad Logan Paul is um, okay, but man, that did not look good. Holy crap. I don't care if Ricochet lifted him up 10 feet in the air. That did not look good at all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That, that wasn't good. Just wasn't good. All right. So anyway, after that, Ricochet and Logan Paul are both taken out. Butch then performed a moonsault off the ladder onto everyone, which was awesome, by the way. There was a lot of great, a lot of great matches. There was a lot of good action in this match. A lot of ma good. It was just so good. Damian Priest then fought off Santos. He also fought with Nakamura, which was very cool. By the way, Damian Priest and Shinsuke, they need to fight. I don't care in a normal match. They need a match between the two. I want to see it. They have never met. They've, you know, they've never fought in the ring before. They need to fight a money. They need to fight somewhere on a pay-per-view. I don't care. I just don't care. Like I want Shinsuke to finally be built up as a credible person again. Anyway, Damian Priest then performs a broken arrow from the top of the ladder onto LA Knight. And um, he he pretty much suplexed LA Knight off the ladder, which was awesome by the way. And then Damian Priest wins the match and he is your money in the bank brief chaos holder at the time of this recording. Um, Money in the Bank 2023, the men's version, um, I'll give this eight and a half. Logic, um, I'll give it a five. I'll give it a five. It, it, it was pretty much like the same, it was the same kind of ladder match that most of us see anyway, but at the end of the day, I enjoyed most of the shit that happened in this match. This was awesome. Put together pretty well, everyone had time to shine. Everyone got offense in. A lot of people were mad that LA Knight didn't win Money in the Bank. I was actually not mad that LA Knight did not win. I mean, there were like four other people that actually could have won. But at the end of the day, I'm not booking WWE. And actually, you know, you know, thank God I'm not. Because apparently I'm hearing rumors that um, Vince is going to be booking Raw. But then all of a sudden Vince got this spinal surgery thing. So he's going to be out for a long time. So Triple H is going to be back in charge, thank God, but I mean, you know, we can only go so far. But this was a very good Money in the Bank ladder match, the men's version, this was really, really good. I really enjoyed this match. Next, Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler. Ronda Rousey, still employed. Shayna Baszler, unfortunately, with the way she's being booked, still employed. They're facing Raquel Rodriguez and Liv Morgan for the women's tag team titles. I did not care about this goddamn match whatsoever. I'm putting it like this. This match went nine minutes. Um, all you need to know really is, is that Shayna Baszler and Ronda Rousey, they were beating the hell out of Liv Morgan. Like, for a while, they beat the hell out of Liv Morgan and stuff like that. Anyway, 
as the match and almost ended. The match is about to end. Shayna Baszler then all of a sudden randomly turns on Ronda Rousey. She chokes her out. I'm not making this up. Then Raquel Rodriguez and Liv Morgan do their finishers on Ronda Rousey. And they are the women's tag team champions. Raquel Rodriguez and Liv Morgan win the women's tag team titles. Only for them to lose two weeks later to Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville. Who have only won four matches all year long. And it happened on Raw! You know, thank God Triple H is about to book actually some very decent shows. Thank God Triple H is back in charge, apparently because Vince is going to be gone for a while. Thank God, because this shit sucked! Why put the belts on Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville? They have done nothing at all they've been fucking losing on live national television unbelievable so let me calm down for a second as i understand what's going on here so Shayna baszler turning on ronda rousey so they're gonna be fighting at SummerSlam, which we will review um Shayna and Ronda in a MMA rules match at SummerSlam. I'm interested in this match, considering there's been very little build for this match, to be honest with you. But um, I think Shayna is going to win. I think Shayna is going to beat Ronda Rousey. Apparently, there's a rumor Ronda Rousey's gone. Um, like, within the next couple of months, Ronda Rousey's gone. There's a rumor that I think Ronda Rousey's contract is coming up. So this is going to be very interesting, to say the least. But I think Shayna is going to win considering Ronda Rousey is going to be gone, so it's only fair. Anyway, I'll give the match, the uh, women's tag team title match, I'll give it a five. I'll give it a five and a half. Five and a half. Logic, probably zero, because none of this made sense. Plus, Ronda Rousey and Shayna, like, they barely won the belts on Raw. And then, literally, like, what, three weeks later, they lose the belts? Yeah, exactly. Who cares? Who gives a shit about the women's tag team titles? No one fucking cares about the women's tag team titles. Retire the belts. Jesus Christ. All right, next match. Guthler versus Matt Riddle for the Intercontinental title. This match was actually good, but it was way, way too short. This match went seven and a half minutes. I'm not making this up, everybody. Seven and a half minutes, but at least this protected Matt Riddle. And I'll be honest with all of you. I don't know what the hell they're doing with Matt Riddle now because Matt Riddle was fighting Ludwig Kaiser on Raw and he lost. Then he got jumped by Imperium for the last couple of weeks before um, everything else happened and everything like that. So I understand that Guther did not need to lose this match, but this match should have not went seven and a half minutes. Why was this match way way too short i don't know why i genuinely don't know why i mean they were focusing on the ankle of matt riddle which was which was fine you know it protects matt riddle don't get me wrong but again like this should have went a little bit longer i don't know why this match went seven and a half minutes plus it made matt riddle look like a chump against gunther so yeah i i i don't know i don't know this match was fun though i'll take it um all right, I'm going to review this match. I wrote down in my notes uh, a couple of things to uh, all of you, for all of you to know. So, R Matt Riddle hit a floating bro on Guther for a near fall. Guther hit a powerbomb for a near fall. And then, as the match winded down, Guther then applied a half crab on Riddle's injured ankle. And then he, I believe he put a, um, was it an Achilles lock of some kind? It wasn't an ankle lock. I will say that. It was not an ankle lock. It was absolutely not an ankle lock. So anyway, um, Gunther focuses on the ankle of Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle taps out. Gunther wins. And then Drew McIntyre comes back to Monday Night Raw. So Drew McIntyre makes his return to Money in the Bank. He's back. We haven't seen him since he last fought Gunther at WrestleMania 39. And then Gunther then shoved McIntyre. And then McIntyre kicked the fucking crap out of Gunther. He got a pop. 
boy, did he get a reaction. Drew McIntyre kicked Gunther's head off. Almost into the third row. Almost. Almost. But Drew McIntyre is back. And finally, Drew McIntyre and Gunther have a match. And they're going to fight at SummerSlam, which we will talk about next time. Right back here on Live Summoning Radio. Rub break. Uh, Gunther versus Matt Riddle. Give this match a six. Logic, one. That's the best I can give for this match. That's the best I can give for this match. Because Imperium were already jumping Matt Riddle. And then Matt Riddle loses to Gunther. Like, seriously. What are we doing with Matt? What are we doing with Matt Riddle, bro? I want to know. Somebody please tell me backstage. Whoever is backstage. What are y'all doing with Matt Riddle? What are y'all doing? Seriously. I'm dead serious. Why is this man not on SmackDown? Because he should be on SmackDown. But he's not. Cody Rhodes versus Dirty Dominic Mysterio. Oh my god! Do I gotta fucking review this match? Oh my lord! Cody versus Dominic Mysterio. By the way, I'm going to point this out before we review this match. Unfortunately, I have to review this match. So, on Raw, Cody Rhodes had a Miz TV segment with The Miz. Why is The Miz still employed? Why is Dominic Mysterio still employed? Why is Rhea Ripley making Dominic Mysterio get the fuck off my television material? I genuinely want to know. <laughs> Dominic Mysterio then taunted Cody Rhodes saying he was a bad father and he should be home with his baby daughter. Seriously, give me a fucking break. I mean, Cody Rhodes is not get off TV material, but with the Cody and Brock feud going on, uh, it is get off TV material. It's awful. Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar having one of the worst feuds all year. And people are saying Becky Lynch and Trish Stratus' feud is worse than that. Hell no, it's not. What the fuck are y'all watching? Cody Rhodes has been getting his ass whooped for four motherfucking months. Four months. That is enough. I've had it with this feud. This feud sucks! I don't care what nobody say. Worst feud all year. Jesus Christ. The, the, the matter, matter of fact, before I review this match, Dominic Mysterio has been on Raw, SmackDown, NXT. Apparently, Dominic is North American champion on NXT. Why? 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 This man does not deserve any championships whatsoever. I don't care if he won because of the Judgment Day. I don't care if he won because of Rhea Ripley. He dumped Wesley on his goddamn head. That right there alone should have not won him the North American title. Wesley... I thought Wesley had a fucking concussion. But we're pushing Dominic Mysterio all of a sudden to the moon. Why is Dominic Mysterio getting a push? Why? Someone please, please for the love of humanity, someone tell me why Dominic is getting a bigger push than half of the motherfucking roster. He's getting a bigger push than LA Knight. WHO IS IN CHARGE OF THIS GARBAGE?! JEEZ! Alright, let's calm down. I'm gonna calm down now. Cody vs. Dominic Mysterio, I don't want to review this match. I do not want to review this match at all. I really, really don't. None of this happened. None of this was important. None of the shit happened in the match was important at all. This match went nine goddamn minutes. Nine minutes wasted. Nine minutes of my goddamn time wasted. Dominic Mysterio lost in nine minutes. Do you give a damn about Dominic Mysterio? No. No, the hell you don't. Cody Rose beat the shit out of Dominic Mysterio. He hit a disaster kick. He had an Alabama slam, Cody Cutter, crossroads, one, two, three, the match went nine minutes. No rating for this fucking garbage. At all. 
No rating at all. Zero, 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 zeros all across the goddamn board. Get Dominic Mysterio off my goddamn television. If I see this man on NXT or on Raw one more motherfucking time, somebody get in the ass whoop. That is enough. Enough is enough. The Judgment Day is fucking everywhere. Everywhere. Get him off TV. This episode of Rope Break is interrupted to advertise Lux Open Radio certified bangers, a roller coaster of music consisting of drum and bass. <laughs> Anything else that comes to Hobble's mind, as well as world news and special guests, you can listen to Life's Opening Radio Certified Bangers every Sunday afternoon on Spotify. Back to the regular scheduled program. <laughs> Let's calm down for a minute. All right. Something actually good happened on this show. John Cena came back. Good. John Cena cut a great promo. I'm not going through the rest of his promo. Um, John Cena said that he's appreciative of London and he thinks London should host WrestleMania in the future, which I absolutely agree with John Cena on that sentiment. Yes. 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 But at Wembley Stadium where AEW is doing all in, I'm... I don't know. I I don't know. I don't know. Um, it may happen in a couple of years, but I don't think it's gonna happen this year for sure. So anyway, Cena interrupted by Grayson Waller. By the way, Grayson Waller, who has not wrestled, who's only wrestled what two matches all year. What are we doing with Grayson Waller backstage? I don't even like Grayson Waller like that. But I can tell if a man is being underutilized and. Seriously, he's like he's unused. Grayson Waller was fighting Edge on SmackDown. As if that's supposed to impress me. And Grayson Waller was actually putting on a decent match with Edge. Don't get me wrong, but why is Grayson Waller not being utilized? You do realize there are way more people on this roster that are way, 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 way less important than Grayson Waller. Like, Grayson Waller needs... To be on TV more. I don't know what the hell y'all doing. Apparently Grayson Waller is going to be with the US title picture. Which is cool. Don't get me wrong. But again Grayson Waller hasn't won a match. He hasn't won a match. So anyway he interrupts John Cena. Um, he taunted Cena about his previous losses. Uh, losses against The Rock. Losses against Brock Lesnar. Uh, yes. Etc. 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 So, Grayson Waller pitched the idea of the greatest Grayson Waller effect, which is a talk show, 
And the Grayson Waller effect, by the way, one of the worst talk show segments that is, it is behind Miss TV. It is get off my television material. This man has fake trees. And it is literally the Grayson Waller effect. It is a ripoff of Carlito's, um, Carlito's Cabana. If you guys remember that. It is a complete ripoff of that. Seriously. Why is the Grayson Waller effect a thing? Somebody please explain to me that. I don't know why. Get it off TV. We don't need Grayson Waller having a fake talk show segment. Waller then attacked John Cena from behind, but then John Cena, he hits the AA on Grayson Waller to end the segment. There you go. That's all I wrote. Uh, John Cena cut a very good promo on this show. It was awesome. And I'm glad John Cena is finally, like, getting the spotlight that he absolutely deserves. Thank God for John Cena. Like, John Cena was the best thing about this entire show, honestly. Really. Except, like, the women's Money in the Bank ladder match, it ended the main event. And then, you know, Seth and Finn, you know. I mean, it was great. It was awesome. So John Cena cut a, gr a great promo. <laughs> Women's Money in the Bank ladder match. All of these people qualified. Trish Stratus, Zoe Stark, Becky Lynch, Bayley, EO Sky, and Selena Vega from SmackDown. Selena Vega, by the way, qualified. She beat Lacey Evans. Why? I don't know. Why is Lacey Evans still on my fucking TV? I don't know. All right. So this match was pretty good. Pretty good. Like the ending... Like, the ending of the match was actually a pretty good finish. Don't get me wrong. It was actually pretty cool. And um, we'll talk about it in a little bit. <laughs> so, Eo Sky and Bailey, they ascended opposite ladders, opposite uh, sides of the ladder. Becky Lynch uh, knocked the ladder down. Becky Lynch then fought off Zoe Stark. Remember, Becky Lynch and Zoe Stark are still feuding. Um, Trish Stratus beat up Becky Lynch on the outside. So Becky Lynch and Eo Sky were beating up Trish Stratus. Zelina Vega um, actually used Stratus as a bridge to climb another ladder, which was cool. And then the best uh, thing about the entire show, Eo Sky performed a moonsault off the ladder all to everyone. Eo Sky took out everyone with a moonsault, which was awesome. And then Zelina Vega jumped off a ladder. She jumped onto Becky Lynch. Stark and Stratus beat up Becky Lynch for a while. They placed a handcuff on her. But Becky Lynch uh, cleared the announce table, and then she beat uh, Trish Stratus over the announce table. And, uh, you know, Becky Lynch and Trish Stratus, they have a lot of animosity here. So, there you go. Um, Becky Lynch then placed a ladder as a bridge between the ring apron and the announce table. And then she did a manhandle slam on Stratus onto the ladder, which was pretty cool. Don't get me wrong. Even though the manhandle slam is pretty much a rock bottom or a uranagi or, you know, you guys get the idea. So Zoe Stark with a neck breaker on Becky Lynch back inside the ring. Zoe Stark and Selena Vega. They climb up the ladder. Selena Vega beating up Zoe Stark. And then she does a code red onto Zoe Stark onto another ladder. Pretty much the Andrade Finn Balor spot from Money in the Bank 2019. Pretty much that. And, um, yeah, that was pretty cool. Don't get me wrong. It was cool. Don't get me wrong. So, um, yeah, Selena Vega got some good offense in this match. Don't get me wrong. Cool. Great. <laughs> so, anyway, EO Sky was climbing up the ladder. Bailey and EO Sky, you know, they're all of a sudden, you know, they're fighting for the same briefcase. Every woman for themselves. So, Bailey then tips the ladder over. And then Bailey then climbs the ladder. But Becky Lynch uh, got some handcuffs. She knocks Bailey down. Apparently, she. Ties up Bailey within the ladder with the handcuffs. And then she is beating up Becky Lynch. And as Becky Lynch was climbing up the ladder, Bailey, I thought Bailey, you know, Bailey was gonna be stuck on the ladder pretty much. So anyway, Becky Lynch is climbing up the ladder. EO Sky comes out of nowhere. She literally jumps from the top rope to get onto the ladder. Then she tricks Becky Lynch and Bailey. Into both of them being in the handcuffs, they, she literally, like, fooled them. She handcuffed both their wrists together between the ladder rungs, which was very cool. And I thought that was a very uh, nice way to go about it. And EO Sky, your women's money in the bank ladder winner. There you go. I gave this match an 8. Logic, I'll give it a 4. This was a very good women's ladder match. This was, like, the best women's money in the bank ladder match and like 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 in the history of the women's money in the bank ladder match there's only been like one good match and that was the 
um 20 that was the 2019 one i think the 2019 one i thought was pretty cool in my honest opinion that was just me though but i do think that a lot of people need to understand that eos guy was the right winner eos guy deserved to win this match eos guy is literally probably the best thing about the entire smackdown women's division because bailey is doing nothing Shotzi Blackheart's doing nothing. Raquel Rodriguez is not even on SmackDown. I was about to say she was on SmackDown, but she's not actually, so there you go. Um, they're, the women's division for SmackDown is fucking miserable, except for Bianca Belair and Charlotte and Asuka, and that's it. A miserable women's division. Awful. But I'm glad Io Sky is the women's Money in the Bank holder, and I am interested to see where they go with Io Sky. Now, um... At the time of this episode, um, Io Sky was supposed to cash in on Bianca Belair and Asuka. They were, she was supposed to cash in on Asuka. And apparently, we're teasing Io Sky to cash in on all three women at Money in, at, a, at SummerSlam. Excuse me. I was going to say Money in the Bank. I wish it was not. I wish it was Money in the Bank, but it's not. But look, Io Sky, uh, some people are saying she's going to cash in at SummerSlam. Some people are saying she's going to be cashing in, uh, like, on SmackDown or something like that. I mean, I mean, it would be cool if she did cash in at SummerSlam, but again, I don't prefer that. I prefer her to cash in at Survivor Series. That's where, really, this needs to go. Because, like, Asuka can't hold the women's title forever. We all know this. Don't get me wrong. But, once again, like, it's only fair. Survivor Series is where all of the women are pretty much fighting, you know, with separate type, like, let's say, Raw Women's Champion versus, no, excuse me, not Raw Women's Championship, thank God the Raw Women's Championship is gone, excuse me, DWE Women's uh, World Heavyweight Championship, essentially, and then the Undisputed Women's Championship, so it's gonna be like that for probably Survivor Series, I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm hearing a couple of rumors about it and stuff like that, but I think it should be done in Survivor Series, I don't think Eos Sky should be cashing in um, anytime soon, because then Eo Sky is literally feuding with Shotzi, and Bailey is feuding with Shotzi, and all of that other stuff. That feud is still going on. So I'm trying to figure out how the hell are they gonna get out of the Shotzi feud, and then all of that other stuff. I mean, if Eo Sky cashes in a SummerSlam, that would mean Shotzi would probably have to get a title shot, right? I um. I'm not saying Shotzi Blackheart is bad as a wrestler. She's not. But, again, I mean, it just doesn't make any kind of logistical sense here. I'm just speaking, of course, logically, like I do. So, anyway, I gave the Women's Money in the Bank ladder match an 8 and Logic a 4. Semi-main event. Seth Rollins defends the World Heavyweight Championship against Finn Balor. A rematch from... Um... No. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. It is a rematch. It is a rematch. When did they last fight? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Because Rollins and Balor have fought before this year. It was a rematch for something. It was not Night of Champions. Hold on. Yeah. Okay, hold on, hold on. It was not Night of Champions. Okay, o okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. I, I thought... I was thinking about something else. I'm sorry. Last time they faced off was SummerSlam 2016. Um, yeah. I am... Listen. This was a good match. Don't get me wrong. This was awesome. I thought this match was pretty cool. Was it better than um, the main event? No. But I will say this. Seth Rollins and Finn Balor was a well-needed match that a lot of people... You know, a lot of people did care about this match. Because they thought Seth Rollins were going was going to actually win this match and stuff like that. So, there you go. Um, there was a lot of great action between the two. They do some chain wrestling and stuff like that. So, uh, Rollins is right after Finn Balor. And by the way, Seth Rollins has taped ribs, by the way. So, he's uh, pretty much going to be fighting through the injury and stuff like that. So, Finn Balor is just targeting the ribs. Finn Balor once attempted a coup de gras, but Seth Rollins avoided it. And then he rolled up Finn Balor for a near fall. Rollins then hit a pedigree on Finn Balor for another near fall. Damian Priest came down. Damian Priest was walking relatively slowly, but at the end of the day, Damian Priest came down to the ring. 
So Rollins was distracted by Damian Priest. Um, actually, Seth Rollins was on the outside of the ring. He was focusing on Damian Priest. And then Finn Balor sent um, Seth into the barricade with a drop kick, a shotgun drop kick, which was a very cool spot. Um, Balor then beat the hell out of Seth Rollins for a while. Balor hit a coup de grace from the announce table and then from the steel steps. So Finn Balor hit literally two foot stomps on Seth Rollins. And this was not the finish. So Finn Balor tried for another coup de grace. Damian Priest stood up on the apron as if he was going to cash in his contract. Finn Balor got distracted. And then Rollins uh, gets uh, Finn Balor off the top rope. And then he has to stomp on Finn Balor for the win. One, two, three. Finn Balor looks like a geek. Finn Balor loses again. Judgment Day loses again. Damien Priest looks like the biggest thing in Judgment Day. And Finn Balor is booked like a geek. Booked like a dumbass. Unfucking believable. This is the shit we have come to in WWE. Finn Balor being booked like a goddamn buffoon. Oh my goodness. Somebody needs to explain why Finn Balor has been being looked. Finn Balor is has been booked like garbage for six months. Enough is enough. Finn Balor needs to win matches. Please. How many matches has Finn Balor won? What? Seven? Eight? All year? Nine? Come on, man. That's ridiculous. All right. Uh, I gave Rollins and Balor. I'll give it a. I'll give it a seven and a half. Logic. I'll give it a six. I'll give it a six. All right. Oh, okay. All right. Main event. The Bloodline Civil War. Man, this match was great. By the way, this match went approximately 32 minutes. I'm not kidding, everybody. 32 minutes. 32. Yeah. So anyway, main event, Bloodline. Um, Bloodline 1 and the Usos. Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa. Accompanied by Paul Heyman versus Jimmy and Jey Uso. This happened because Jimmy and Jey Uso are tired of Roman Reigns. Finally, they're tired of Roman Reigns. Finally, they're fighting him. Finally, they're beating his ass. And they're beating Solo's ass as well. Thank God. They're back babyface. They should have been babyface a long time ago. All right, so Solo beat up Jimmy Uso in the corner, but the Usos, they beat up Solo Sokoa. Solo then tags Roman Reigns in. Roman Reigns and Jay then circled each other with Reigns uh, getting the upper hand on Jay Uso. He beats him up. So Jay then performs a suicide dive on Solo Sokoa. He tried for another, but Reigns punched him out of midair, which was cool. Reigns then hit a Superman punch, and he was playing to the crowd. Apparently, he was um, all of a sudden, you know, he was like, this is you. This is your guy. This is your guy. Jay Uso, this is him. And then... Jimmy then tagged himself in as um, Jey Uso was down. The Usos, um, they beat up Roman. They did a double spear on Roman Reigns, but Solo Sokoa broke it up. Jey Uso then sent Solo Sokoa into the ring post. Reigns performs another Superman punch on Jimmy Uso for a near fall. Jimmy Uso performed two super kicks on Roman Reigns. He knocked down Roman Reigns. He went for the frog splash, but Reigns countered in midair into the guillotine choke. And then... Um, Jey Uso were trying to break up the guillotine choke. And then, um, the referee, I hold on, okay, hold on. Here's what happened, everybody. I'm trying to, I, my notes is a little bit clouded here from this moment out. I know what happened. I know how the finish is. I know how the match ended. But, uh, this match, this part of the match, I literally have no idea what happened. Here's what happened for real, for real. Roman Reigns was about to be super kicked by Jimmy Uso. Apparently, there was supposed to be a spot where Reigns catches Jimmy Uso. He does. But then, the referee is behind uh, Roman Reigns. So, 
Jimmy then sends Roman Reigns into the referee, so we got a ref bump. And then the Usos hit a 1D on Roman Reigns, but the referee was down. As the Usos were going up, Reigns and Solo Sokoa gave them both Uranagis, which was awesome, by the way. Very cool. Solo then hit the Samoan Spike on Jimmy. Roman Reigns hit a spear. Solo Sokoa hit a spear as well. And they stacked Jimmy Uso on top of Jay. They were going to do a double pin, but both Usos kicked out. That was awesome. I thought that was a great false finish. I thought this match was going to be over. I thought it was going to be over. I sincerely thought it was over. This match was great. Solo then hit a super kick on Jimmy Uso onto the announced desk. Uh, Solo was going for a Solo was going to go for a splash through the announced table, but Jimmy Uso moved out of the way. Solo Sokoa goes uh, into the, the, the into the announced table. He crashes and burns. Jay hit a super kick on Roman, and then. Jay, hit, Jay Uso hit a spear. No, excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry. Jay hit, a, Jay hit a super kick. Roman came back with a spear right away after the super kick. And then as Jay Uso was kicking out, he hit a low blow on Roman Reigns. Referee obviously did not see this, which Roman Reigns used to do. And then after a couple of minutes, Jimmy Uso and Jay Uso both hit double super kicks on Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa. There were eight super kicks in this match. And, like, what? Six of them was to Roman Reigns? So, anyway, uh, finally, Jey Uso hits the frog splash on Roman Reigns. And Roman Reigns loses for the first time since 2019. Roman Reigns gets pinned on this goddamn show. The Universal Champion pinned on this show. A lot of people were mad about this. I was pissed that this happened. I thought this match was going to end in a DQ. That's what actually I predicted um, in the past. I predicted this match was going to end in a DQ. Instead, this match did not end in a DQ. Roman Reigns took a random ass loss to Jey Uso. And now they're going to be fighting at SummerSlam because Jey Uso pinned Roman Reigns. I mean, it was um, very gutsy by WWE, but I did not like this decision at all. A lot of people did not like this decision at all. Roman Reigns should have not been beaten in a tag team match on this show only for a big reaction for the Usos. That should have not been the case. At least, I mean, I would have been fine with this match ending in a DQ. At least if, like, you know, Roman got a steel chair and he hit Jey Uso with a chair. Something like that. I would have been fine with a DQ. I don't think Roman Reigns should be losing and then all of a sudden, you know, have, you know, I don't think Roman Reigns should really be pinned. Seriously, like, it's just baffling to me. I mean, the match was great. I gave the match a eight and a half in Logic. I'll give it a five. That's the best I can give for this match. Honestly, it's a tag team match, you know. Not, not a lot of uh, Logic or callbacks in this match, but um, they all made sense in the end. But this match was the best thing on the entire show. Go watch this match if you have not. But yes, Roman Reigns got pinned, and I was not happy about this decision at all. I normally around this time I would be interested in this Jimmy Uso and Jay Uso. I would be interested in this Jay Uso and Roman Reigns feud. Apparently, Jay Uso thinks he's going to be the new Tribal Chief because apparently Roman Reigns has abused his power and stuff like that. So I'm interested in that, but again, I don't see. I don't see Roman losing the belt to Jey Uso. I don't think a lot of people would see that happening anytime soon. I mean, Jey Uso is world champion. I mean, I'm not saying it won't happen, but at, on the same token, like, we all know what's going to happen, you know. But anyway, uh, very good Money in the Bank 2023 pay-per-view. Very good show. I gave a rating for the rest of the show. I'll give it a 7.5. Logic, I'll give it a 5. That's the best I can give for the entire show. And with that, we're going to end the Money in the Bank review. And we will talk about what happens at SummerSlam next time, right back here on Life's Opening Radio. Road Break, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. And as I said earlier on, I'm holding down the fort for Cabo. And we will see you guys next time for WWE SummerSlam 2023. Until then, on behalf of Cabo, I'm Ben Charles. So long, everybody.